Hello everyone, my name is Mark Abspoel and thank you for joining my talk on work I did together with Ronald Kramer, Ivan Damgaard, Daniel Escudero, Mathieu Rambeau, Chao Ping Ching and Chen Wan on asymptotically good arithmetic secret sharing schemes over gamma rings via means of elementary lifting and applications to multi-party computation. I'm going to start by jumping straight into some of the mathematics that illustrate what we are going to be looking at today. Let's take the ring of integers modulo a prime power p to the k. From this ring, we get a homomorphism pi to the finite field of order p. This homomorphism is surjective. So if we take any element a in the finite field, then there exists a lift b in the ring upstairs, such that the projection downward of b equals a. Since the homomorphism is not in general injective, um, the lift is not uniquely defined. If instead of taking a finite field downstairs of prime order, we take an arbitrary finite field, the corresponding ring we get upstairs is a Galois ring. More specifically, for any Galois ring upstairs, we get a corresponding projection homomorphism pi. Since we can express the finite field of q elements, where q equals p to the h, as a quotient uh, of a polynomial ring in fp, uh, we can also write the Galois ring in a corresponding form. For the Galois ring, we quotient out by the ideal generated by g, where g is a monic polynomial um, with coefficients in z modulo p to the kz, and the reduction of g modulo p is irreducible in fpx. Again, we get a surjective projection homomorphism pi from the Galois ring to fq, and we can lift any element downstairs to an element in the Galois ring. However, in this work we are not interested in lifting single elements, but we are interested in lifting larger structures. Concretely, we are interested in the lifting of linear secret sharing schemes. So the question that arises is if we take a linear secret sharing scheme defined over FQ, can we now lift this secret sharing scheme such that we get a secret sharing scheme over R? And if so, what properties of the secret sharing scheme are preserved by this lift? Now the reason we're looking at these liftings is because we want to achieve asymptotically good arithmetic secret sharing schemes over the Galois ring uh, in order for us to be able to use them for multi-party computation protocols. An asymptotically good secret sharing scheme is briefly put uh, a family of secret sharing schemes with lengths of, or the number of players tending to infinity uh, over a fixed finite field so it has a constant share size. Using this we should be able to get uh, a linear complexity multiplication protocol which is optimal. You might think, why, why not use Shamir scheme? Is, is because it's in fact not asymptotically good. Um, so in Shamir scheme, the number of players is bounded by the field size, which for fields is not too much of a problem in practice because usually in MPC, you're computing over a large field, usually a, a large field of prime order. Um, but for Galois rings, this uh, constant or the, the, the bound on the number of players is different. Uh, so for a Galois ring um, with characteristic p to the k and degree h, we need p to the h to be larger than n, which means that uh, if we're looking at the case, for example, p equals 2, then um, h already needs to be uh, log n starting from uh, the, the very beginning. So even if we have just four players, we already need to get uh, uh, h uh, equal to 2. For information theoretic multi-party computation protocols, we basically have two regimes. We have the adversary corrupting less than a third of the players or the adversary corrupting less than one half of the players. For the adversary corrupting less than a third of the players, we are able to achieve perfect security, so zero, zero error probability. This requires strongly multiplicative secret sharing schemes. We're able to use Shamir scheme, which also works for the maximal adversary, so t strictly less than n over 3. But Shamir scheme has the downside of requiring that the number of players be less than the field size. We can also do it over a fixed finite field using algebraic geometry codes if we allow a small linear gap between the privacy and reconstruction thresholds. 
Both of these constructions have been transported to Galois rings, but the algebraic geometric construction requires lots of complicated geometry over Galois rings. In our approach, we look at the different regime, which is t less than n over 2. Here, with Shamir's scheme, we can get n log n complexity, and over fields, the state of the art is the protocol by Ben Sasson, Fehr, and Ostrowski from 2012. We are going to be adapting this protocol in our work, thereby also improving the state of the art for the t less than n over 2 case, even though it is not what we focus on with our elementary lifting techniques here. With our elementary lifting techniques, we are going to look at lifts of uh, self-dual codes or algebraic geometric codes, in any case, codes that are asymptotically good. Then, in this setting, we are able to achieve a linear complexity in the online phase. However, because the preprocessing phase in the BFO12 protocol still relies on polynomial interpolation, we still get an n log n complexity for the offline phase here. Let's briefly recap linear codes over finite fields. A linear code over fq is a vector subspace of fq to the n. It has a dimension, namely its dimension as a vector space. It has a minimum distance, which is the minimum number of coordinates that is non-zero, excluding the zero vector. And it also has a dual with respect to the standard inner product on, uh, on fq to the n. Since the dual is also a vector space, and hence a code, we can also look at the dual distance of the code C. Now it's been known since Massey that there is a correspondence between linear codes and linear secret sharing schemes over FQ. Namely, if we get a linear code C, then we get a linear secret sharing scheme with the dual distance minus two privacy and the length minus the distance plus one reconstruction. In this correspondence, we designate one of the coordinates of C to be the secret and the remaining coordinates to be shares of the players. For the multiplicative property on codes, we look at the span of all coordinate-wise products of two vectors. We denote this space by C squared. If this space is not the full space FQ to the N, then it means there is some linear relation between the coordinate-wise products of any two vectors. In terms of secret sharing, this means that if we have two secret sharings and the players locally multiply their shares, then they are able to linearly reconstruct the products of the two corresponding secrets. Now recall our projection homomorphism pi from R to FQ. We can also extend this over n coordinates. And if we have a linearly closed subset of fq to the n, we can lift this and take the r linear span and then get an r linearly closed subset upstairs. The question arises what properties of the code downstairs are preserved in this manner? Now, if we insist on c hat, the code upstairs, being a free module over r, then we can show that the distance and dual distance of the code upstairs are lower bounded by the corresponding parameters of the code downstairs. Also, we can show that some uniformity remains. Uniformity in the context of secret sharing means that the distribution of the share of any particular player or any privacy set is uniform. Unfortunately, as we already indicated, multiplication does not lift, and we shall demonstrate this with a counterexample. However, for p is larger than 2, we will show that we can find a specifically chosen lift that preserves self-orthogonality of a code downstairs. So if we take a self-orthogonal code, then we can lift it in a particular way such that we get a self-orthogonal code over the Galois ring. And the nice thing about self-orthogonal codes is that they have a multiplicative property. Now we insist on C hat being a free module, and we can easily see why we need this. For example, Take the code over f2 to the n, which just had the all ones code word and the all zeros code word. Now, if we lift this code to z modulo 4, then we can add the code word 2, 000, which projects down to the zero code word. So we get a non free lift. The minimum distance of the code downstairs is obviously n, but now we have a lift with minimum distance 1 which is the worst possible distance. Now in slightly more detail. 
if we have a t-dimensional code over the Galois ring and taken into the definition of code, we assume that c is free, and we look at the reduction of c modulo p, then we can lower bound the distance and dual distance of c by the distance and dual distance of c bar. Also, we can show that c dual is in fact a free module of rank n minus t. For uniformity, we have that if we take the projection of c onto any set of coordinates that is of cardinality less than the dual distance minus one, then we have that we get the whole space. Now we will show why multiplicativity does not lift, and we will do so with a counterexample. Take two codes, c1 and c2, defined over fp, of the same dimension k. Now we take generators x1 up to xk of c1, and we're going to lift them individually to r. We're going to do the same with uh, generators y1 up to yk of c2. The lifted generators, we'll call them x1 hat to xk hat and y1 hat to yk hat. Now for the code upstairs, we will define it to be xi hat concatenated with p multiplied by yi hat. Now if we take this code and we look at its reduction c bar, then we can see that since we included a multiple of p for the generators of c2, they collapse to zero. This means that the dimension of c bar squared is equal to the dimension of c1 squared. However, if we look at the dimension of c squared, then it is surely at least larger than the dimension of c1 squared and the dimension of c2 squared. So it also depends on the dimension of c2 squared. Now, if c2 has a bad square, for example, say the dimension of c2 squared is very large, then we can see that c also has a large square. However, c bar square might have a small square if c1 has a small square. So we can lift an arithmetic secret sharing scheme, but in lifting, we lose its arithmetic property. So we need another way to get multiplication. Now for p and odd prime, we can find a specific lift that preserves the self-orthogonality of a code. So if we have a self-orthogonal code defined over the finite field, then we can lift it to a self-orthogonal code over the Galois ring. This is no longer about the structure that is preserved under an arbitrary lift. We have a specific single lift that works for this case. I am not going to go into much detail on what the lift looks like specifically. But the idea is roughly that we take the code over the finite field and stepwise we will increase the power of p by 1 and lift it to a self-orthogonal code. Now just to give a rough idea of what this process looks like, let's take a generator matrix for c bar, the code that we want to lift, that is defined over fq. We're going to take a canonical lift to the Galois ring with characteristic p square. This canonical lift does not include any factors of p. Now again, we get a matrix in systematic form. So we get this submatrix A on the right-hand side, and based on this submatrix, we're going to define a new matrix A2. Note that in this expression, we have the factor 1 half. So we need to be able to divide by 2, which is why this method that we have found does not work for the case p equals 2. We do not know if there is another method that does work for this uh, case. Also note that we have this factor i plus a times a transpose in the definition of a2. And given that we know that c bar is self-orthogonal, we know that this, is, uh, this expression evaluates to zero in fq. Hence, if we take the lift to the Galois ring of characteristic p square, we know that this expression is inside the ideal p times r. This means that if we reduce a2 modulo p, then this entire second term evaluates to zero. Hence, if we look at the code with generator matrix i and a2, if we then reduce it modulo p, then we again get our original code c bar. Now we can show that the code we have generated just now is self-orthogonal and to get the self-orthogonal code over R, we simply repeat this process. Now the whole point of looking at self-orthogonal codes is that self-orthogonal codes have this multiplicative property, and we know that they exist over fields. As we have shown, our method for lifting self-orthogonality does not work for the case p equals 2. So we need a different way to get multiplicativity. 
we will use an existing technique where we take secret sharings in both C and C dual. Since we know that the inner product between a vector in C and a vector in C dual is zero, we have a linear relation of the coordinate wise products of these two vectors, which is precisely what we need for multiplicativity. The downside of this approach is of course, is that it doubles the share size. With these results about lifting codes from finite fields to Galois rings in hand, we now apply them to what we already know to be true for codes over finite fields. The goal at the point was to get asymptotically good arithmetic secret sharing schemes over Galois rings. Now we define slightly more precisely what we mean by this. A, fa um, a family of codes is a sequence of linear codes with the respective lengths tending to infinity. For, for such a family of codes, we can look at the relative distance, which is the limit of the dimension divided by the length of the code, and also the relative dual distance in a similar manner. For fields, we, can, we know that there exists a family of codes with the relative distance and relative dual distance approaching one half. In fact, these codes even exist when we require strong multiplication. Also, a family of self-dual codes exists, also attaining these bounds. Given what we now know about lifting, we can simply take such a family of codes defined over a finite field and lift each code individually to R. The parameters will follow from what we discussed in the previous slides. And to get multiplication for the family of codes that we have lifted, we use either for P greater than two, the self-orthogonality trick, or for p equals two, we use the trick where we secret share using both C and C dual, if we want an asymptotically good arithmetic secret sharing scheme. With these results about asymptotically good arithmetic secret sharing schemes over R, we now look at the communication complexity of multiparty computation over R. We're going to look at information theoretic MPC within the computationally unbounded adversary that corrupts less than a fraction one half minus epsilon of the players. Additionally, we assume a broadcast channel, which is needed in this setting. And uh, we are in the model of statistical security. Now there are three specific settings we consider. First, we consider passive security. Second, active security with a board. And third, the best model full security with guaranteed output delivery. So the adversary cannot do anything to disturb or alter the computation and it is guaranteed to finish. Recall that in Shamir secret sharing scheme based MPC, we always have an n log n communication complexity where the log n is due to needing to move to a larger Galois ring in order to accommodate an increasing number of players. However, with asymptotically good secret sharing schemes, we can actually get a linear communication complexity, as we shall see. This factor one half minus epsilon, instead of just one half, comes from the fact that we need a linear gap between the privacy and reconstruction thresholds for these asymptotically good secret sharing schemes. For Shamir scheme, we would be able to tolerate up to one half of the players. However, then it is inherent that we need the size of the shares to grow with the number of players. For passive security, we generate random double sharings in a pre-processing phase, which are sharings of the same random element R in both C and C squared. To then multiply two elements in the online phase, we simply take local products of two secret sharings and then use these random double sharings to move from a sharing in C squared to a sharing in C. One problem that arises is that van der Monde matrices that are invertible and are of sufficient size do not necessarily exist over R. A solution here is to move to an extension of Galois rings. For active security with a board, we simply take the passively secure protocol from the previous slide. Then we use an existing compiler to compile this passively secure protocol to a, a protocol which is actively secure with a board. We can do this because the protocol from the previous slide is not just passively secure, but it is also actively secure up to additive attack. This means that the multiplication protocol is private, and the only thing an adversary can do is introduce an additive error at each gate. 
The compiler then works by taking secret sharings x and r times x and keeping this as an invariant, where r is a secret random value that is the same for the entire circuit. At the end, it will be verified whether the output sharings satisfy this form. Everything basically just works using this existing compiler, and the result is a protocol with linear communication complexity per multiplication. For the regime of guaranteed output delivery, we require a lot more work. The previous state of the art for this setting over Galois rings adapted a protocol that was not state of the art over fields. It has a communication complexity of n square log n, and it was chosen because it simplified the exposition of the other techniques that were needed to adapt Shamir's secret sharing scheme to Galois rings. In this work, we chose to adapt the state of the art over fields in this setting, which is work by Ben Sasson, Fier, and Ostrowski from Crypto 2012. For this, we had to overcome various challenges that are posed by adapting this considerably more complicated protocol over Galois rings. To give an idea of a few challenges that we had to overcome, our secret sharing scheme for P equals two Recall that we doubled the share size by taking secret sharings in both C and C dual. Um, this means that we can no longer nicely move to an extension of Galois rings, which is needed to reduce the error probability. We managed to overcome this by taking the tensor product of our secret sharing scheme with a suitable extension of Galois rings, and as a result, we do get a secret sharing scheme defined over this Galois ring extension. Some other challenges were that the correctness check of the protocol from BFO12 relies on uh, the invertibility of elements, and we no longer have this over Galois rings. Um, another thing is that the authentication tags are based on twisted sharings, which are secret sharings with the secret coordinate corresponding not to the zeroth coordinate, but to a different coordinate, which corresponds to one of the player's shares. And this is done to minimize the complexity of these authentication tags or minimize the overhead of introducing them. For the pre-processing phase, um, BFO12 introduced a polynomial trick for batch verification, which reduced the communication to uh, n log n, basically. The log n factor comes from the fact that you're using polynomials over a field, um, similar to the fact that we have this n log n communication complexity for Shamir scheme. Unfortunately, we were not able to improve on this um, for our Galois ring setting. Um, hence, we are stuck with this n log n factor in the offline phase. However, in the online phase, we do get the benefits of our asymptotically good secret sharing schemes, and we reduce the communication to linear. Also, our work in adapting BFO12, it also works for the setting of t less than half of the players using Shamir's secret sharing scheme. And our work also improves the state of the art for this setting. Note that combining our techniques together with results from crypto this year, uh, we can actually reduce the communication even further to a linear complexity in the online phase. All right, to sum up, we have shown that arbitrary lifts of codes from a finite field to a Galois ring preserve both distance, dual distance, and uniformity. For p greater than 2, we have shown that with a judicious choice of lift, we can preserve the self-orthogonality of a code downstairs. Using results over fields, we can get asymptotically good linear codes over R by simply lifting each of the codes in a family of, field, a family of codes individually. We can get arithmetic secret sharing by either using our self orthogonality, or we can get a sharing using both C and C dual. We get a linear complexity MPC protocol, both with passive security and for active security with abort using existing techniques. For guaranteed output delivery, we get a linear complexity online phase with an n log n complexity preprocessing phase per multiplication phase. That sums up my talk. Thank you.